This is the Tech Support Guy Show, episode 73 for November 24th, 2013. Geek Gift Ideas. This is the Tech Support Guy Show. I am Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy, and with me today is Dan McCarthy. Howdy ho. As always. How are you doing today, Danny? I am neato, nifty, and tired. <laughs> and tired. You changed it up a little bit. Yes. <laughs> so on your Christmas this sh- list this year will be caffeine. Yes, exactly. Caffeine Lots tablets or caffeine. Uh, coffee-related uh, accessories, memorabilia. Yeah. No, not memorabilia. I'm good with K-Cups, so I have a couple of Keurigs in the house. Yes, I did say a couple. Um, so feel free to send K-Cups. There you go. That's uh, stocking stuffers. Right. So today we're going to be talking about holiday gift ideas for geeks, geek gift ideas specifically. Uh, and uh, we've got a couple. We actually had uh, uh, Hobo in the uh, chat room send us a couple of suggestions. One of his was the charging mat for the uh, Nexus 5 and Nexus 7 devices. And you sounded a little yeah. excited about this, Dan. Yeah, so I, I hate putting my Nexus 7. I have the second gen and the first gen uh, Nexus 7. The second gen Nexus 7 supports the wireless charging, and I hate putting it on the charger. It's just cumbersome. I like laying it on my nightstand and being able to walk away from it, but I can't do that because I don't have the wireless charger yet. This is why it's on my Christmas list. I really like wireless chargers, and you know, I'm old. So, and I, I don't know if you remember this, Dan, but I used to like Palm devices. I remember. <laughs> that was a joke. I think every Be- podcast we did death. for a long time um, I mentioned <laughs> Palm devices. And Palm, you know, had this in their smartphones for a while, the, the wireless charging. Um, they did not use the standard. The Nexus uh, Google devices use the QI standard for wireless charging, uh, which is what a lot of phones that support wireless charging use is QI. So if you had a Nexus, like I had the Nexus 4... Yeah, I had the Nexus 4, and it supported wireless charging as well, but Google didn't sell a wireless charger for it. But you could pick up any QI charger, and you could charge your phone that way, and I did. Um, Unfortunately, I now have the Samsung Galaxy, which does not support wireless charging, so I now lay my Samsung Galaxy on the wireless charger every night and then plug in the cable into the device directly. (laughs) It's kind of sad. The wireless charger still remains laying there. But it's kind of nice now. Google has their official one that they've released, and what was the price point on that, Dan? It's uh, forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine ninety nine, and you can't beat that. And you've got the Google, you know, name backing it up. It's not like the the Chinese brand one I bought off of eBay for for my phone, where you're hoping it doesn't catch fire at night. So, <laughs> um, so I love it. I think it's a great one. And fifty bucks is perfect. So if you know someone who has the Nexus Five or Nexus Seven, again, remember this doesn't work with every smartphone or even every Android phone. It's only those specific devices that support wireless charging. Uh, and so if you have, have a friend, have someone who has Nexus 5 or Nexus 7, this is a great gift idea for Dan. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, what else we got? <laughs> so that actually coincides with a, a couple of the items on, on my, uh, my Christmas list. I, I've already said that I have the second gen Nexus 7, which was released a few months ago, but it's a fantastic tablet. It's, uh, it, it'll fit in your back pocket comfortably, and if you sit on it, it doesn't hurt it too much. 7-inch screen, roughly $230, although with Black Friday coming up, I believe that some of the retailers are, are reducing it to just under $200, so it's a great one to get for anyone uh, within your household. All of my kids use a Nexus 7, or another item on my, uh, my shopping list is the Amazon Fire HDX, which also comes in a 7-inch version, around the same price point as the Nexus 7. Um, Comes in 16 gig and 32 gig storage capacities, hooked directly up with Amazon. And what I like about the Amazon Fires is the Amazon Free Time. You can really control how your children use the uh, the tablet. You can give them more time on books, less time on videos, and you can restrict their in-app purchases and their ability to surf the web. Which so I, I think what I'm hearing you say is that for uh, for kids, you would recommend the Android Fire just so you have those parental controls. But for adults, uh, would you lean towards the Nexus 7 for some reason or just turn off yes, the parental absolutely. controls? No, I would turn I would. Uh, so for adults, I would, I would go with the Nexus 7. I've tried to find an app for the Nexus 7 within the Play Market that will allow me to control like I want on the Nexus. 
my oldest son, who who just turned nine years old this week, he has uh, he has the first gen Nexus, and there are I have parental control apps on it, but they aren't as inclusive and restricting or restrictive as the uh, free time app. Mm -hmm. Now I will say that free time is actually a subscription service. You get access to a lot of uh, Nickelodeon, Disney videos, and books. So it's inclusive in that, and it ranges anywhere from, I think, three ninety nine up to $7 for a family, but it's well worth it. My youngest children use it. So give me the price points once more. So the Google Nexus 7 was? Uh, 229 And your Android Fire? I believe it's the same. Awesome. They're, they're really trying to compete directly. Uh, yes, plus, but in order to use the extra features, the Android Fire that you like for kids, then you'd have to pay that extra little subscription cost. Yeah, and just to be clear, it's the Amazon Fire HDX. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I said Android instead of Amazon. Thank you. Yes, the Amazon Fire HDX. Uh, and quite honestly, they're still se selling some of the second-gen Amazon Fires, uh, Amazon Fire HD, which also has uh, or is compatible with FreeTime. So if you're looking to save a couple of dollars, I believe those are going for 139 right now hmm. on the 7-inch And what's model. the difference so, between them, just speed and capacity? Speed, capacity, and screen resolution. Uh-huh. Although they're so, both HD. Yes, they are. Yep. Okie doke. I like that. Um, and uh, and I wonder if... And so the, and the Nexus 7 would be able to use that wireless charging pad. The Amazon Fire probably not so much. I, I believe that is true. Okie doke. Um, moving right along. What about... I think that we're, we're seeing a pattern here. I think we have another Google device and then another Google device. Are we only suggesting that people buy Google devices for, for the holidays this year? So I, I had a realization uh, this past Monday, and I'm going to admit it on camera. I am a Google fanboy. I've said it. You know, the first step in acknowledging uh, in, in correcting a problem is recognizing it. I'm a fanboy, and I, I don't wish to do anything about it. Google is putting out some really quality products. And no, I'm not only recommending uh, Google products. Like I said, the Amazon Fire is great for... Uh, for children and families. Well, but, and uh, the Amazon Fire, I guess it runs, correct me if I'm wrong, on a version of Android, but it's so is, separated, you can't even, uh, am I mistaken, you have to only buy apps for the Amazon Fire, you can't buy just any Android app for it? You can sideload some, so it's, it, for the most part, it is actually actually compatible with most Android apps. You can sideload them if you uh, root your device, uh -huh. but uh, for, for most families, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. But it is running a, a customized version of Android. Um, so that might be another a, reason why adults might prefer to have the Nexus 7, just to have because you're going to have a wider variety of programs in the App Store than you will for the Amazon Fire. Absolutely. And Amazon really wants to tie you to their marketplace, not only for apps, but for uh, music and books uh -huh. uh, and, and, and videos as well. Uh-huh, sure. A uh, question in the chat room: What is the storage capacity on the Nexus Seven? Uh, six, I believe, sixteen thirty-two and sixty-four. Ah, uh, so we're looking at the sixteen gig probably for that two twenty-nine price point. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are. Which is, but would you think probably enough for your average person anyway? It's it's completely enough for me. So what I do on my Nexus Seven: first of all, I pay my bills on my Nexus Seven. I watch videos on my Nexus Seven. Most of the time, I'm streaming them from some cloud service provider or from Plex, my own uh, mm -hmm. media server in the house, uh, and I use it for as my e-reader. And all of my books are in uh, Google's cloud service. It's uh, Play Books, so it is more than enough. I've never run out of capacity on that, which is actually different. We've actually run out of capacity on our uh, Amazon Fires here. We have two Amazon Fires within the house, and we have run out of capacity on those 16-gig uh, versions because the content keeps caching and caching, uh -huh. and the management behind that is a little poor. Gotcha. Um, well, and I guess when it comes down to it, most of the time, if you have a decent Internet uh, connection, you can usually stream the stuff anyway. It's yes. just if you're going to go on a trip and you're going to be on an airplane, for example, that you'll want to download a couple of movies on there to make sure the kids are, or yourself, <laughs> as yes. the case may be, yes. can be entertained and not create a, you know, cause a ruckus. It's nothing more embarrassing than being on a plane with Dan and he starts getting bored <laughs> and running up and down the aisle and, you know, right. he's got to throw angry birds in front of him and... <laughs> All and right. I'm all set. Excellent. What else you got? I, um, we were talking about, you know, one of your favorite Google apps. Maybe this is the reason you become a Google fanboy. 
one of your favorite Google devices is the, the Google Chromecast. I love the Chromecast. So um, I have a, a, a small a 32-inch TV that we have in our kids' playroom, and it's not hooked up to cable, it's not hooked up to a game console or anything. It has a DVD player connected to it so that I can control when and what the kids watch. But uh, Google came out with the Chromecast, and this device allows you to stream Netflix to basically a dumb TV uh, from your phone, your Android phone, or your Nexus 7, Nexus 10. Uh, you can do HBO Go, you can do Netflix, you can do Pandora, Hulu Plus, um, Google Play Videos, Music, and I'm sure I'm, I'm missing uh, an application, but you control it all from from a tablet or a phone and my daughter will come in the morning she'll wake us up in the morning and she'll be like can I watch whatever and I can reach over to the nightstand grab my Nexus and tell her to just turn the TV on and whatever she's asked for is actually playing uh -huh. and I've controlled it all right there and I and when I want her to come down uh, if I'm too lazy to go upstairs and, <laughs> and get her from the playroom I just press pause and miraculously, she comes downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the TV stopped working, Dad. Exactly. So you know, it, it's, it's I got a fantastic. Chromecast after your recommendation, and I need to remember to give it to you sometime. Next time we meet up, I actually put it into the box, by the way. I got all the accessories and the wire okay. and the power supply and put it back into the box, and, and it's ready for you now. Um, and I did that because I was in the process of hooking up a Roku. Uh, the Chromecast wouldn't work in for for me because I have a commercial wireless network and uh, router instead of your residential one, and it requires uh, a UPnP a feature that that a lot right. of commercial wireless routers don't don't support. Um, but for most home users, Chromecast will work fine. I don't want to mislead people. I I don't expect anyone who's listening to this will probably have that problem unless they're trying to use it from work, perhaps. But um, but in any case, so I ended up getting a Roku, which is I don't know three times more expensive or twice as expensive. How much is the Chromecast? The Chromecast is $35, yeah. and uh, when they first came out, they were giving credits for Netflix, like $15 credits for Netflix, which I, even for existing customers. Oh, wow, that's weird. Yeah, it was great. I got two months free on Netflix. It was, it was really all right. Well, and so the Roku does a lot of the similar stuff and has a couple extra features on top of that, because with the Roku, of course, you can surf through your Plex and, and all that. I don't think you can do that through, through uh, Chromecast. So you cannot. There's, yeah, and there's a couple of... I forget some of the other apps. There's you know thousands of different apps you can put on the Roku, uh, and a couple of them that I used weren't on the the Chromecast. I forget which ones. You know, the Amazon and Netflix and all that, I think, are on there, but and Hulu, and I forget what it was. But in any event, there's there's a lot of choices on there. But I think both are great devices, and, uh, and with neither one of them, do you have a recurring fee, a monthly fee or annual fee right. to, to run them? Uh, unless you subscribe to some content within the device itself, um, but both of them, you buy the device for thirty-five, or in the case of the Roku Three, I got it's ninety-five, um, and uh, and hook it up, and and like Dan said, you don't even have to have cable to the TV. We're, yeah, I've been thinking about getting the same device up in the bedroom because you know we have a TV there and rarely use it, but with this, you could just start a movie downstairs and pause it and go upstairs and resume it. You know, you nice. connect to your Netflix, connect to your Amazon Prime Video, instant video, connect to wherever you want to watch your you know, YouTube, whatever you want to watch, and just roam around with it. So it's, I, I, I do like I like them the more. Roku, the Roku, the the fact that it supports a, a media server like Plex mm -hmm. is is definitely in its favor above Chromecast. Sure, uh, Google has really locked down what you can do with the Chromecast. And uh, I wonder if that won't change over time, or if there will be a a, another iteration of the Chromecast that'll have more advanced features and third-party apps, you know, more easily written for it. From what I understand, they did it intentionally to kind of placate the content uh, creators. So that it's, it's, their their fear is that you're just going to download content and play it on like your Plex media server uh -huh, sure. and then just cast it to Chromecast sure. rather than buying it from Google Play or from Amazon or ultraviolet whomever you know yep. so well and to be fair i don't know that your average user needs anything more than the chromecast anyway your average user yeah. is not downloading movies or music or or needs to sort them into plex and needs to download that and needs a thousand different apps to you know be able to right. watch you know netflix or hbo or mlb or whatever from from it and and both of them by the way can be controlled by your phone as well they both have apps for it 
So anyhow, they're, they're both great, great choices and, and excellent, especially for kids. But even if you don't have kids, and I know some, in fact, I have an employee who no longer has cable TV. He just uses a device like this in order to watch, you know, whatever movies, TV content he wants to on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, all those other services right on his big flat screen TV. And you wouldn't know he doesn't have cable except that he doesn't have to watch commercials, perhaps. <laughs> you know? and, and the only downside to that really is if you're into some of these uh, TV series and want to watch the show when it comes out that night, you know, the, the finale of such and such a show is on tonight. With a lot of these devices, you have to wait a day or a week or whatever in order to watch that episode. But yeah. but you don't have a cable bill, so that's a thing too. It's worth the wait. I'll, yeah. I'll be honest with right. you. We have uh, basic cable because for the same reason we we have subscription services to Hulu Plus, to Netflix, to Amazon Prime. We don't need um, cable service. And with with Comcast making a deal now where you can basically get basic cable plus HBO with an HBO Go subscription. <clears throat> You don't really, I mean, HBO would be kind of the only reason that I would get cable. Well, and uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. And, you know, I can't remember the last time I watched a live TV show anyway. Yeah. Generally, I much prefer to watch them recorded and skip through the commercials anyway. So the fact that I'd have to wait an extra day or two or a week or whatever. Because most of the time when I'm watching a series, I'm going to, you know, sit down and watch ten of them at a time anyway. A marathon. You know, yes, yeah, marathon. you do the marathon <laughs> series and, you know, it's... The only exception for that for me would probably be Walking Dead, but I'll bet through one of these services you can probably watch the latest episode of Walking Dead on the next day anyway. Yeah. So, anyhow, uh, yes. I like it. Yes. I think it was a great suggestion. So, um, you have another one you want to mention before we wrap up? Yeah, just real quick. This is my wish list. So, anyone who listens and is wealthy and really likes, you know, my voice or. Well, I'm going to send a copy of this video to Santa. Please do. Yeah, Please I'm do. Directly up there. I want a Google Chromebook Pixel. So tell me why. Because now, first of all, tell people what it is for for people who aren't familiar with it or didn't catch our other episode where we mentioned it. This is Google's uh, laptop. It's their Chrome. It's their kind of flagship uh, Chromebook laptop. Chromebooks are uh, any kind of small device, much like Ultrabooks, that run the Chrome OS operating system. And this is a uh, this is a cloud focused operating system, and that's not why I want the the Pixel. But um, I want the Pixel because it's relatively powerful for a small device. It's about the size of uh, a 13, 14 inch Ultrabook. Um, has I think 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage. It's got the Intel uh, integrated graphics. But the screen resolution on it, the ratio on that, is one of the uh, the neatest things about that. Let me pull up an article real quick. I have it in my... While you look it up, I'll mention I got to play with one of these for a couple of minutes out in California about a year or so ago. And uh, and it was a neat little device, very light, very you know small. It's almost like a tablet with a keyboard attached to it in, right. in a lot of ways, including the fact that whenever you you're using it you can't throw just any app on it it has to be an app written for i guess for android in general i don't think it has to be specific to the chrome i mean to the uh, chromebook right but uh yeah. but so it's not like you can go and buy a copy of office off the shelf and install it on the thing it doesn't have a cd drive to begin with but even if it right. did you can't download your you know just any app for mac or windows and run it on this just like your tablet it can only run those apps for that device uh, and one of the complaints I heard about it from the people who were testing it at that time was, of course, as Dan said, it's a cloud-based device. It has not a lot of storage in it, and it's really designed to be used while you're on the cloud. And it has very limited functionality when you are not on the cloud. You know, if you're in an area where there's not Wi-Fi or it's not connected through cellular or you don't have in an, in an Internet connection, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. But Honestly, even if I have my laptop and I don't have an internet connection, there's not a whole lot I can really do with it either. You know, I have my Photoshop on it and I can do that and I can type up Word documents and I can do, but you know what I mean? It's everything needs to be connected to the internet these days to be really productive anyway. So if I remember correctly, um, Linus Torvalds put a, a different flavor of Linux on, on the device rather than having the Chrome OS, which is uh, completely cloud focused. So uh, you can do things more powerful. I'm not sure if Windows will run on it, although it's an Intel uh, uh, Core i5 processor, so I wouldn't see any reason why you couldn't put Windows on there, mm -hmm. except that you have some storage limitations. But the resolution on this is uh, 
2560 by 1700 with 239 pixels per inch. Uh, in wow, say that again. 2560 by what? 1700. Wow. Right. Wow. And what is the dimension? What's the actual screen size? It's a 12.85 inch diagonal. Wow. Now I don't know what the resolution is of say like the uh, new iPads, but just for the it, sake of comparison, the the um, na- uh, what do I want to say? Not natural resolution, default resolution. What's the word I'm looking for? The chat room will help sure. me here in a minute. But the the correct resolution for my 30 inch monitor that I have in front of me here is uh, 2560 by 1600. I was trying to get my <laughs> monitor on the screen here. That's a terrible shot of it, but I'm sorry. The, the camera's wired up. That's what you're going to get. Um, but, so, but so a 30-inch monitor, the, the default resolution for it is 2560 by 1600. The, it, that's the optimal resolution for it. It doesn't go higher than that. And for most monitors, you know, if you have a 20-inch monitor at home or 19-inch or 21-inch or whatever, usually those are like 1900 pixels wide. Yeah. So, with, and with that said, and it this would is a twelve-inch screen. That is a really high a density. Novelty. Yes, it would be a novelty for sure, and I, I think that you would need, you know, binoculars to to really fully uh, uh, appreciate it. But um, the screen it's also touchscreen, and it, it's just a, it's a nice size device. I have a, an eleven-inch Chromebook, Samsung Chromebook. Chromebook but the fact that it's running Chrome OS on that kind of makes me use it about once a week when I'm too lazy to go upstairs and get my Nexus. Uh-huh. But I would like to get it and put uh, Ubuntu on it and see if I could start using it as a development machine, maybe even having a small virtual machine for Windows on there. That's why I want it. Interesting. This is a, it's a big change for me because I, I currently carry around a 17-inch laptop. I have a 17-inch personal laptop and a 17-inch uh, work laptop uh-huh. uh, that are power horses. They're basically desktop replacements. Right. Uh, this is kind of uh, uh, me being bipolar. It's a fairly powerful laptop, but it's so small and lightweight that I'm not sure what I would do to make up for the loss of weight. Maybe I would actually work out. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying your laptop around is your uh, current workout? Exactly. I like it. <laughs> All right, so um, so I guess who would you suggest this thing for, and what, what was our price point for the uh, for the um, Chromebook? <laughs> the Chromebook, I believe, it's running from twelve ninety to like fifteen hundred. Wow, see, that's the other problem with yes. it from my point yes. of view. Is I mean, you can buy a really nice laptop that runs programs. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes you can, and this is why <laughs> and has storage. I have not bought one. Yes. <laughs> This is why I have not bought one for myself. Yeah, so I don't know. That's that. That's maybe really wish list territory there. It, it, um, it was definitely wish list. And, and really list. for a geek at this point, I would say, I don't know if your average student or whoever would really be able to appreciate and use it. You're absolutely right. And for the average user, uh, and even some students I have, I have started recommending, mostly because I'm tired of fixing their computers, uh, Chromebooks. Uh-huh. Because they don't need anything else. They, they can save uh, Excel spreadsheets. They can do most formulas that they need in those Excel spreadsheets within the, the Google Office suite. Um, it has built-in virus protection so that I'm not clearing out tons and tons and tons of spyware, malware, what have you, Trojans, etc. I, I just spent, no kidding, 18 hours cleaning out my uh, brother-in-law's mother's computer. That's crazy. And then I sent him a link to the uh, Chromebook. Yeah, I, the price point is just too much for me. I don't understand. I mean, if well, they were to make a similar device with like a normal resolution, and you know, they could make that. Of course, it's <clears> first you know, generation. So once the next one comes is. out, maybe it'll be a little bit better. But so to be clear, for the average user, I'm recommending the two hundred dollar price point uh, Chromebooks. They're not touch screen. They have they're eleven inch screens for the most part. Uh, they, they're they all running Chrome OS. They have uh, typically Intel Atom processors, not necessarily uh, a core i anything processor, but they're, they're great for 
average users, not power users, I see. average users. Yeah, so there's the Chromebook, and then there's the Super Chromebook, apparently. Ex- exactly. The Chromebook Pixel would be the Super Chromebook. I see. And the price point I'm seeing yeah. on Amazon for it, this Samsung Chromebook is, with Wi-Fi only, is 244 Yes, Just that is the model that I have. Um, Acer also has one at $199. Um, HP has one I think they came out with around 279 although because of the charger, Google and HP have since pulled that as they fixed those issues. Uh-huh. Okay, well, that's more reasonable than what I was expecting. I think I misheard you earlier, or maybe we were talking about the Super. So so that's not bad, and it, it doesn't have the crazy resolution, though, does it? Not it that it needs it, to. It does not. Yeah, so it's a it normal resolution. This one I'm looking at is 1366 by 768. So that's just a normal laptop, except it's only 250 bucks, and as Dan was saying, is very unlikely to be, be able to get viruses, and I would assume has very good uh, battery life, boots very quickly, and you know, yes. everything's in the cloud. It's just the disadvantage of not being able to put third-party apps on it that aren't designed for it. Right, but most people are using social media. They're checking their email yeah. via Yahoo, Gmail. Right. If all you do with your computer online. is check Facebook and check your email and surf the web, this is exactly the device you need. Well, even if you're even if you're doing moderate productivity, like I said, if you're writing a term paper, you can do that on this. Sure. If you're if you need to do formulas for your accounting class, you can do that. You know, it, it, it could be a student uh, student device as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility, I suppose. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding off. off on that, especially because I'm thinking of a lot of universities, depending on what you go into, not even computer-based, not, not, not just development software, yeah. but in a lot of different areas, you have specific software you need to install on your computer to be able to do it. Yeah, I know Heather was a, mu- a music major, and there was specific music writing software she had to install. And I know a friend who was a biology major, and there was some, I don't know what it was, some kind of science crazy yeah. thing they had to install. <laughs> I don't know. And as these programs become cloud-based, it'll That's be true. you know it won't matter. But right now, a lot of them are not. Absolutely, so, that, that is absolutely true. So that's my hesitation on it. Now, if you're talking about school kids, as in high schoolers, then this is great. And the other advantage of it is if they destroy it, or maybe when they destroy it, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> it's you know it's right. it's not twelve hundred dollars. And their data is not on there anyway. It's all on all in the cloud. They right. can simply change their password to their cloud-based services, and you're done. Right. Okay, I'll buy. So, so, so to to summarize for the holidays, we're suggesting that people buy Google and Google and Google. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. So, a lot of these devices are actually with partners with Google. So, you've got Samsung, Acer, Asus. Uh, so, it's not just Google. Uh huh. All right. Google and partners. I didn't see any Windows devices on that list. You did not. Or I any not Apple know. devices on that list. Um. I, I, let me let me give Apple the benefit of the doubt for just a few seconds. They they create very good devices. They have very uh, very much quality products. Their profit margins on those quality projects or products is beyond what I am willing to pay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe that the quality that they produce right now is worth the profit margin that they receive on them. The, the profit margin that they receive on the iPhone and the iPad, it's ludicrous. And they're a for-profit company. They want to make money, get it. I completely understand it. But sure. their marketing isn't worth me paying that extra dollars, especially with my fifth child coming in December. Yeah. Well, and good luck with that, by the way. Uh, by the next time we talk to you, you very well may have an early Christmas present there. That is my Christmas present. My only Christmas <laughs> Love it. present. All right, Danny, thank you very much for all the suggestions. I appreciate it. I think there's some good stuff here. Uh, we're going to post all this on the site. TechGuy.tv is where we have past episodes of the podcast, and we'll have all of the show notes, including links to all the devices we talked about today. Uh, you can also go there to subscribe. You can subscribe in iTunes. Uh, and uh, also, um, yeah, go to TechGuy.org if you're looking for any kind of computer issues. If you're having trouble installing any of your new gadgets that you get for Christmas or trying to get any of these things up and running, there's volunteers there who are happy to help you out. And they don't even make you buy them a gift like Dan does. <laughs> All right. Happy holidays, everyone. We'll talk to you next time. Happy holidays.